Uh, oh my goodness. I keep an electro for when I want to go up to San Francisco play with the <coughs> Friends band. Okay, yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying to collect a whole bunch of these. Uh, you know, I've got my axe in, uh, uh, over at the shop, but I uh, and I just cleared this out. I just this was all <coughs> CRT monitors, and I just got rid of it and uh, threw threw them all out. Okay. Uh, okay. So here, my ah <laughs> Moog Liberation. You have to like work out to be able to wear that on your shoulder. <laughs> and Such this is my favorite playing MIDI keyboard of all time, the Piano Plus Four Hundred. From Roland. It's the 80s, isn't it? Uh, 84, 83, 84. And uh, it's just a fantastic responding instrument. I did all the Buckaroo Bonsai stuff was done here. Uh, here's a XK, uh, XK2. I use an XK5 now in my regular setup. And the VL1, I did a whole bunch of stuff with Michael on this where you know, the, the the thing you can do with lipping up uh, with the virtual instruments, it was just, it's fantastic. Certainly right? groundbreaking at the time. Oh, yeah. And there's some noises in this thing that you just cannot get at. Besides the, the virtual instruments, there's like just audio mangling going on yeah. with this instrument that's just, as I said, defied anything that, that was out at the time. Yeah, it's surprising to me that it didn't really do better than it did because I think it's it was that whole era was spectacular. What they were there's a, another couple of instruments that were beyond this polyphonic mm -hmm. that uh, really played great, sounded great. But I had to give that back to the factory after I worked with it for a while, and uh, uh, they never really were in the marketplace. What do we got? We got uh, oh here. Have? The accelerator, I love the accelerator. My original soloist. Uh, What's an accelerator? Oh, this, oh, golly! From from the okay, I'm I'm sorry, and I know that Mo gets pissed off at me when I say this. Okay. Uh, but Spectralis, the, yeah, the, they they make possibly the best sounding synthesizer ever made. Okay. Okay, so I've got one on the other side. This is, uh, I'm sorry, Rect Radical is the name of the company. The Spectralis. Spectralis is the name of, the of the instrument. Uh, the Accelerator was uh, their keyboard, their simplified version of the keyboard uh, that it, what they're building now are modules, but whatever, whatever these people do at Radical, it sounds so. I, I actually went to the back of their NAM booth and checked to see what they were putting in it because it was just some the KRK speakers, mm -hmm. like I have on my modular mode, and it was just so big. I thought, oh, they've got to be putting it through some kind of audio processor, and it's it's a spectacular unit. I'll show you on the other side here. But this, you know, the Stratus. This was the first right, one, right. The, the first one that had uh, an envelope generator oh, that you could do smoke. pitch bends uh, on one oscillator and not on the other. I mean, yeah, nobody else had the time. Yeah, all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I only got one record on it. This on Patty Austin's record uh, on a song I wrote for her called Ono Margarita. Um, Speaking of well, like, there's a. Uh, Part of my series three. It's a fair light. Yeah, it's at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there doing nothing. How much did that cost you about that thing? <laughs> oh, Six yeah. figures. Uh, One hundred thirty-seven thousand. <laughs> and I had two of them. <laughs> and I had two of them. I had one. I did. I had the in-house music production at Shy Day Mojo, and uh, but you know it, it's good. And here's the we were talking about the poly modes. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. got several of those here. Really? Uh, and the Synergy and, DK. Jesus. Yeah, the Synergy. You're right. And uh, how cool. what else is that? Oh, a modified string ensemble. So I took a string yeah, ensemble so you can go into the chopper directly with any MIDI sawtooth and it comes out sound like a string ensemble. Wow, it, it's, that's it's, excellent. It's great. It's great. It's a little, that's you know, CZ. big, big to carry around. But what's under here? Oh, what's it? Oh, there's an S oh, SY99. Ah, okay. Yeah, is that great? And Emulators. Oh, 
Nothing, <laughs> nothing like a prophet six. Jupiter six. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I said prophet six. Jupiter six. The Jupiter six. Still my favorite bell sounds. That whole thing I did on uh, the natural and on the early Michael Jackson records. Those bells were all Jupiter six bells. Nothing like it. Uh, the filter sounds great. The mm -hmm. pulse width modulation. Again, we talked about the the sideband distortion on stuff. It has none of that. Um, this is like flipping through every keyboard magazine I had when <laughs> no I was kidding. 17 right. years old. Yeah, new yeah. ads. This, oh boy. And this didn't even have sync on it. We used to take, and there's a, a half speed switch on the arpeggiator, and you'd get it in tune or, or in time at. Uh, half speed, and then you flip it to double speed, and just do it wild. It's ridiculous. Wild sync. Absolutely uh, ridiculous. My accordions, I have a, a more horror. accordions. Oh, oh yeah. These are the ones that I'm keeping, though. There's, there's all different sounds. Uh, you know. Uh, See, I love you for that. These are the ones I'm keeping. Well, the 440. Well, well, I, I kind of came to them by default. I had a bunch of them myself, but my mom, when she came to live with me, she brought 49 accordions with her. No! <laughs> and, and, Wait, what? <laughs> and also, well, they owned a pretty big music store. Six tons of accordion music. Six tons. Okay. And, uh, but, so I have, uh, you know, Weltmeisters and Titanos, and I have wet tuned Titanos, I have free bass Titanos, and I have A440 and A441, and I have a bass accordion, and then I have a beautiful old Stark, which I love. It, it, the, the tuning on, the wet tuning is different on every key, and when you play a chord, it just sounds like an ensemble. Wow, uh, it's, how it's cool. It's really cool. And uh, then, um, you know, the uh, different kinds of... Uh, Harmoniums. A uh, whole bunch of this is Maroon 5. What took all of these? Uh, this one. And, and then this. Listen to this. This is Turn of Last Century. Oh my God, that's so clear and beautiful. Yep. Yep. And it's my steam. My, my D6, my clavinet down there. Mm -hmm. Just. Uh, not because it usually lives out there, but because we had to clear the living room for some event, you know, and and it ended up being up here. It's usually downstairs set up. Holy but this smokes. is this is all the stuff that was in the credenzas in the studio that nobody then ever used. Uh, and I game. and I just got rid of my plate. I had a four by eight foot plate that weighed something like six hundred and fifty, seven hundred pounds. Wow. <laughs> it, it it was just dangerous, man. That's dangerous. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, all that. Love you that. know, all the different kinds of choruses oh, yes, and, and oh yeah, and the um, uh, where is my? Uh, I have one of those surround reverbs in here too. The uh, where is it here? Right here. RSP, the, right? Yeah, the the five fifty. You have the old R eight eighty one with that. that, that. And uh, then we start getting over here. This is, you know, in the old days, uh, when I moved my synths, I had 60 synthesizers in these racks, and we'd move them in, and I could do... Uh, All these spec mixers. He makes the best stuff. Oh, absolutely. Vince is the man. Yeah, he is. Uh, I could do... Um, so I have two sets. I had the original mono, and then I had the stereo. Mm -hmm. And I had 60 channels of stereo synths in, and uh, then the busing unit, which is right up here, you can take the busing unit and you have an additional eight buses out. So you have two coming out the mixer mm -hmm. and then you have eight buses here. So I could do a 5-1 mix out and still have an extra, like a, a solo channel for something that I wanted to separate out of the 5 -1. So you send these in when you had studio gigs. At Delta oh, we would just, show up. just show up with the rigs, and I have uh, Starship you know, Boddicker. Five, five, <laughs> five keyboards ahead of me, uh, and uh, then all the stuff in the racks. But, uh, you know, that, that won't fly anymore. There's not one person that moves this kind of rig in Los Angeles anymore. Um, I've worked on these at Kurzweil. Oh, yeah, I love oh, the that's great. Series. Some, love and, I, and I had a 250, but, you know, again, it's just so big, it was hard to move it. Uh, um, a drum machine or sequencer or something? Well, this no, one's a, a piano module, right? Yeah, the piano P3. module. Um, 
this one, I use this on so many things. This Bob Easton 360 system. I loved him. I love Bob, and I, I love that that equipment. It was great. It kept time really well. This this in the Prophet 2002, the Prophet 2002 was absolutely the best timekeeping sampler. Yeah, it, it, and uh, then you know I had a bunch of studio electronics. Yeah. Well. Okay, so you know, <laughs> the, yeah, I, I, I love those guys. I, I love them, and uh, but when I sent them over my best bass mini Moog out of six, I sent the sent it over, and it came back. I said, "Boy, this doesn't sound the same as the the Moog that I sent over." And they were like, "Oh, you wanted that Moog? We just kind of put them into a pile and then adopted." Seriously? <laughs> oh yeah, and I just went. Ah! It was my best bass, but you know I had I had five more, so uh, it's still uh, w we still were able to do records you after that. But I have you should give me this immediately. Oh, the, <laughs> the bi face. You, you know, it's sitting up here, you're not using. You should. Well, I have two of them. I have two. Of them. There you go. How <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh, and uh, this vocoder was somewhat useful back at the end of the Michael Jackson days. Here's a. And uh, uh, talking about those Moog modules that we looked at downstairs, these are great. Uh, the parametric sounds really wonderful. I think a lot of people don't understand how much they were into just the audio side of things. Well, I think that he was trying to do this for synthesizer use, mm -hmm. though. He wasn't like going, "Oh, this is for audio." This is he was doing this for synthesizers, this is right? Uh, and and here's the Nile Steiner uh, uh, resonance uh, string filters. And those sound really unique and beautiful. And uh, then, Garfield stuff. oh yeah, I was trying. I was trying. Let's see. Oh here, here back in here. There's something interesting behind one of these racks here. Something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, oh the M one R, the A D, the O one R W, a couple of J V ten eighties and. Uh, a couple of still a D550s and uh, TG77 and a TG500 uh, and then uh, you know an eight banger a TX88 and then also the TX7 which was pretty right? sweet I had one yeah uh, but with a programmer on it I sat it up on top of my JX8P and didn't have to take the DX7 with me anymore the PR7 the programmer the Beetle so do all that yeah was it love Jelly, that Jellinghouse I forget who made that you know, it was Beetle, I think. And they made one that was like a full size. I think that was the Jelling House. Just that one that was bigger than the DX7. Yeah, it was great. But this, oh, this, wow, this, absolutely, absolutely, the Prophet 2002 kept time better than anything else. This thing was revolutionary, too. This was the, 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 yes, the whatchamacallit, the DW8000 combined with like a, a half a gigs or a half a megs. I of, used so. the DW8000 on so many hit records. Great. I absolutely great. loved the sound of that instrument. Yeah. And then used to have a whole stack. Oh, now I still have a couple of 770s, but used to have like four of them in there. And then uh, trying to get rid of my... <laughs> Come on, come on over here. <laughs> the, uh, Can we get you through there, the, 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 yeah, the DP. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I blocked you out. No, okay, no, here. Let me let me pull you in here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I wasn't even thinking. Oh, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, like Expression Plus for MIDI and I mean in the old days, okay, I'm, a, I'm gonna go back and I'm trying to get better about saying, you know, we've just, we gotta leave all that behind and go to only the new stuff. But in the old days, if I had two rows of these synapses, right? I could take and have all my synthesizers there, and if I wanted to play all the synthesizers at once, I just went like that, and now I'm on one. Right, which was my main KX88. If I went to two, I'm now on my um, MSQ700, mm -hmm. being fed by the KX88. And then if I went this, again, three, I am up an octave. Four, down an octave. Five, I go to another controller keyboard. So I have uh, five controller keyboards, a uh, Lin 9000 and an MSQ 700, and it was it was that fast. I didn't have to grab a mouse and go grab a menu and click down and then be limited to only eight. You know, remember in the mm -hmm. lot, uh, not logic, but uh, in Studio Vision Pro. Oh yeah, right. I mean, the, you, you, you could have banks of eight, right? Not banks of twenty. 20. <laughs> And uh, 
and it was just, it was so fast and it was so beautiful and there's no delay and I just I love those days and I think about that all the time how fast I used to be able to just go okay and now all of a sudden I've got a completely different setup on different keyboards with different octave switching and all that right there and and it it was pretty good for doing live with orchestra well here's a profit five in you know, a rack. They, yeah. Oh, Studio Electronics, again, fantastic. And then a Super Jupiter. I used to actually keep two Super well, Jupiters. Especially if you like the Jupiter 6, because that's basically what those things are, with a bass boost. That's kick-ass. Per, pretty sweet. Well, it also, but this had the unison, the unison D-tune, right? right? Yeah. The unison D-tune for those big, thick basses. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, that this, the, the DPX-1. Uh, again, replaced almost always my emulator one after we moved on where I was just keeping the library for historical purposes but not building the library. I could play back almost everything on the DPX one. Sure. And then you noticed, you know, old digital metronome, a click delay, and Russian dragons. Oh, that well, thing was so the best named piece of gear in the universe. The Russian right. dragon. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, time-based meters, all that stuff, to keep stuff in time. And people don't even know. I could go into explaining about how we used to have to flip over the tape, measure in milliseconds with calipers the delay of the synthesizer to the click, and then set up the delay here and go and, you know, flip the tape back over and record. Uh, this is uh, the bit one. I got uh, that Missing You, uh, the Diana Ross thing. That whole intro is here. The profit I love, VS. I love that oh, thing. I had one fantastic. for years and years. I had to sell it recently. It broke my heart. Just fan. FDSS. FDSS. John Michel Jarre yep. has one. I have one. The factory had one. It's it. 256 of additive synthesis, completely variable envelopes on each of 256 sine waves. And you could take and sample a piano sound in and then sample a rolled cymbal and put the characteristics of the Rhodes rolled cymbal on the piano and it was just fantastic. But it was PC based and in that day, uh, again, 19, probably 88 or so, PC and audio and it just was, yeah, it was crashing. It, and, and, and I had to, had to not, you could not have anything that crashed. You know, it was enough that on the early profits, I had to push the tune button off 